Hi, I'm Sam Thompson. I'm a freelance filmmaker based in London. Last year, I reviewed the Panasonic EVA1 for Wex Photo Video. But these days, I find I use a lot of B cameras on my shoots. So I wanted to look at what B cameras will work best with the productions I go on. Whether I am filming an event, a two camera interview, doing some time-lapse or hyperlapse photography, or even just grabbing some handheld shots when I don't have the luxury of time to set up a shot with my main camera. It's also fantastic to have a second camera operator using a gimbal alongside your shoulder mount or tripod setup. These days it's an essential part of the filmmaker's arsenal. I'm an EVA1 owner, so it makes sense for me to go for a smaller mirrorless camera. So I'm checking out the Panasonic offering, looking at how the GH5, GH5S and the S1 perform. My friend Antoine and I are going to put all three cameras through their paces over the next week on our shoots. What we want to do is trying the photo capabilities of the S1 to do an hyperlapse. I'm really keen to see how the new full frame sensor, how the new processor of the S1 perform. Panasonic S1, the newest addition to Panasonic's mirrorless camera range. What makes this different from the GH5 and the GH5S? The most obvious answer to that question is the size of the sensor. It is a full frame sensor. This means that if you already have a camera like the EVA1 and you're looking to have a second camera that has a similar depth of field, that shallow cinematic depth of field look, then it's an obvious choice. That doesn't mean that a micro forward third system doesn't have its advantages. Hey man, good Hi. to see you. How are you? Very good. good. Thank you for having us here. No problem. For this shoot, we put on a polarised filter and use the GH5S as a wide shot to cut with a shallower image for a close-up shot with the EVA1 at a 45 degree angle. Both cameras have similar colour science and are set to 10 bit with a V-log picture profile. For more in-focus look, the GH5S contrasts nicely with the soft focus background of the EVA shot. And this doesn't just work for interviews. Whereas the S1 was handy to capture cinematic footage, similar to my A camera, but with the advantage of convenience and being able to get up close to the subject. The Panasonic S1 ships with an L mount, so I only managed to get hold of one of the three native Panasonic lenses for this mount, all of which are quite slow at f4, but the flange distance is 20mm, so with adapters any Sony E mount or Canon EF mount can be used, opening up faster APS-C and full frame lenses as options. It was also easier to achieve enhanced bokeh. The GH5 and the GH5S still hold the rank, shot in 10 bit. For me, the GH5 is noticeably less quality in low light than the GH5S. But in these gig performances, the S1 and the GH5S, I think, are on level pegging. That being said, I would take all three cameras on the night shift because they all do deliver good looking images but we wanted to see how the noise in these cameras compared shot to shot. The GH5 doesn't have dual native ISO and is micro four thirds. So here we have the EVA1 cinema camera, the GH5S with its micro four thirds size sensor, but with dual native ISO and the S1 with a full frame sensor, similar to the EVA. The noise levels of the first two are not surprising, but I was struck with the S1. Its noise performance is very impressive indeed. The GH5 has no internal stabilization, but the GH5 has internal stabilization reaching five stops when combined with a native Panasonic lens. The S1 has six in total when combining iBID and a stabilized lens. It makes a huge difference. Walking shots, tracking shots, moving shots are possible without a rig. Well, almost. But right now the S1 doesn't have a lower profile, so it doesn't really match with the other two. But it's coming out soon in the paid firmware upgrade but all cameras do have hybrid log gamma. We've just finished filming in Rubberspective Studios with Patrick Hughes, who is a wonderful character, and I had the absolute bestest time. It was a fantastic place to film. We shot this whole project in HLG across all four cameras, the EVA1, the S1, the GH5, and the GH5S. And we're gonna have a go at matching all of these different cameras in that picture profile. Patrick Studio is quite a good place to do this uh, because there was a bit of a yellow-greenish 
skew to the lighting in there. And there was loads of wonderful colours to the paintings. So hopefully we'll be able to do a good grade and have a really good video. So here we are in Premiere Pro uh, in the Le Mertri colour panel. Uh, Patrick is looking kind of green with a uh, weird hue to his skin tones. Um, that's the either one shot. This is the S1 shot. And as you can see, they look quite different. Um, I've got a GH5 shot here, which admittedly is a bit underexposed, but you can see that that also looks quite different to the GH5S. Now, the first thing you should do to uh, start your color correcting process is to apply a corrective lux. After much research on the internet, I found Film Convert, a plugin that you can get for Premiere Pro, is one of the best tools to use. If you choose your source camera, the evil one, and your picture profile, then uh, choose a film stock that looks nice and take the grain down to 0%. You can then start off your color correction and grading from a good place. To make my paintings, we first of all have to make the shapes. We make them out of medium density fiberboard and marine plywood and araldite. We glue them together, we make them. And then when I get those shapes, I look at them and I wonder, should that be books? Should that be mazes? Should that be paintings? About 20 years ago, somebody said to me, could you decorate my new restaurant? It's going to have a Venice theme. And I said, no, it would take three or six months. And a week or two later, Photoshop became available to everybody. And Photoshop liberated me. I accommodate the uh, rectilinear palazzo into a reversed perspective painting bar, we revert to an old-fashioned technique of tracing. I've got nine very talented artists who paint them in oil paint and we give them to the world. We exhibit them and let people make them move, making something that is odd in itself and that you experience its oddness and uh, daftness and uh, in a very subtle way, humour. I've been an artist for about 60 years and I've often done things back to front and inside out. If I did rainbows, I used to do black and white rainbows or straight rainbows. Reverspective as a way of uh, introducing something new to people. <laughs> 